Hey guys and welcome to the first tutorial video of the year 2021 on this channel and um, this video is completely about side chaining in Bitwig Studio and I know that Matthias recently made a nice video about side chaining in Bitwig uh, on his channel and I highly recommend you to just watch it but I want to have my own tutorial on my channel too and also maybe add something to it that's not covered in this video so um Let's start the video, have some fun and sidechain all the things. Okay, so sidechaining in Bitwig is actually pretty easy. There are a lot of ways to do it and I want to show you each of them. So we have here a super simple loop or song running. It's a kick, a kick channel, a clap sound, a bass sound and some chords synth. So super simple i made this in uh, two minutes and but it will do the job of explaining how this works in bitwig so what people usually mean when they say you need to sidechain this is that you basically duck a bass sound with the kick sound so every time the kick drum plays the bass sound goes away or fades down in volume or you shape the volume basically of the bass sound with the kick drum and normally you do this with the compressor right so people just load in a dynamic dynamics plugin and instead of using here the bass sound as an input and changing the threshold right the ratio the knee setting and volume shape the bass sound basically with itself you replace the sound of the analyzer uh, with the second chain, which in our case here is the kick drum, and I choose here E kick post. So now we have the E kick in here um, in the analyzer. What we apply, we still apply the volume shaping to the current track, which is the bass sound. So you can see we get the kick signal in here, but we apply the volume shaping to the bass sound. So this is basically what people mean when they say you need to sidechain something or uh, you need to sidechain the bass with the kick. Okay, so um, you basically take a second signal, use it in the analyzer and apply the volume shaping to the current track. On an interesting note, the Dynamics plugin actually has a sidechain FX box here down below on the right side. And you can apply audio FX on the sidechain signal before it hits the analyzer. So when we open this here, we can apply, for instance, an EQ2 and maybe remove the top end of the kick drum before it hits the analyzer to get rid of some, you know, uh, distortions or some overtones. And just let the punch through to the analyzer or we can kind of create some look ahead functionality where the compressor knows beforehand what's happened next so we can implement here a time shift device and just track track the sidechain signal a bit earlier um before it hits the analyzer so this is also something you can do with the sidechain fx box here so you can filter out or apply um, audio effects on the sidechain signal. Pretty helpful sometimes, not every time, but sometimes it's pretty nice to have. So um, this is one way of doing it with the compressor um, plugin or with the Dynamics um, device in Bitwig Studio, because you have here a sidechain input. And you can also apply some FX to the kick sound before it goes into the analyzer. So you can use maybe a low cut, high cut, and just remove certain frequencies you don't want to have in your sidechain signal. So this is one way of doing it. A second way is uh, because ducking something or just fade something away in volume doesn't need to have a compressor in, in, um, involved. You can just use an uh, audio sidechain modulator which has also an analyzer here and you 
can get here the signal of the kick drum in here and use it in the analyzer to generate some kind of modulation signal. And to get the clean signal out of the kick drum, we can narrow down here the frequencies to the, to the important frequencies, which is around 100 Hertz for the kick. And you can see we generate here a nice signal at the top left, and we can use this signal to modulate something. And in our case, it's of course the volume. So we want to reduce the volume of the polysynth, which is our baseline generator. And now every time the kick drum plays, we generate a signal and the signal modulates here the output the volume of the polysynth. And as you can see, you have uh, all kinds of control over the, the analyzer. You can change the slope for the attack and the decay here, the rise and fall knobs. And you can also amplify the effect of the pumping. If you want to have a pretty heavy pumping bass sound, you can just amplify here the basically the input of the, of the sidechain, or in our case, the, the amplitude of the kick, kick sound. So you, the more you basically gain the kick, um, the more you modulate your signal or you, the more the signal you generate, which then modulates the output even more. So this is the second way of doing it uh, by using the audio sidechain modulator. And there's another sidechain modulator, which is called a um, node sidechain. And it's the same, it's the same procedure. Basically you have here an envelope and we get here our kick sound, but in this case, it's not a kick amplitude or the wave sound or the, the audio, uh, the audio stream coming out of the kick drum, or uh, the, the kick device. It's basically the node information itself, because you can see we have here the e-kick and we have node clips over there to trigger basically the kick device and to use this this node information here to trigger this envelope and this envelope then generates a signal and this signal is used then to modulate something and in our case here it's the volume knob again to reduce we can remove this here or just we just leave this in so it's the same effect, but because we use here node clips or node informations, uh, we can use the node sidechain to trigger uh, an envelope, which triggers the volume knob. And the benefit of this is it's much cleaner and we don't need to analyze an audio signal. And it's probably also much faster. And as you can see, here, uh, we can um, make this envelope pretty steep and fast. So it's nice for precision um, side chaining um, yeah, tasks. Okay, so the third way of uh, basically ducking um, a bass sound with the kick drum is by not using it on the bass sound or instrument itself. We can just remove this here. We can just use a tool device which has just a volume knob in here, right? And we can use the modulators on here. So maybe we start here with the audio sidechain. And we modulate here the volume exactly like we did it on the, on the uh, polysynth itself. Just get the e-kick in here. We narrow the signal a bit down to the kick drum itself, change here the tag and release. And now we have the same effect here with the tool device, which is just the volume knob, right? Um, the main benefit of this method is that you can just grab this tool device, um, use Control and C for copying this, go to a different channel. In this case here, it's our um, yeah, chord synth. And then we just paste it into here, right? Without having to 
cloning or copying modulators over to different devices, then you have to map to a different uh, volume knob or etc. Right? In this case, you just copy and paste the tool device to different channels and you can clone the same um, behavior to different channels by still having here the kick drum essence sidechain signal and modulating the volume knob exactly like you did it on a different channel right so you can go here to all these tracks and just hit uh, control and v insert the tool device and have the same ducking effect applied to this channel so this is the third way of doing it and i usually do it exactly this way because because i can just copy or clone these devices pretty easily then there's the method of using an EQ. So we can go here and use an EQ plus and I use EQ plus for a reason. And I show you in a minute why. Maybe insert here just another tool device at the end so I can move this over here. So now we have the bass sound in here analyzed. And we click the EQ plus device. We go down here and can use a reference and we can use the e kick as an input and we have basically now the analyzer overlaying the signal of the kick drum over the bass sound and it looks like this as you can see here in purple the purple line is basically the kick drum playing on its own channel and we don't want to duck actually the whole channel with the volume knob we want to just reduce the uh, the frequencies of the kick drum so we go in here use the audio sidechain and yeah insert one band maybe this one here reduce the volume of this just uh, just a bit and we use the kick drum here as an input narrow it down to the important frequencies like this and every time the kick drum plays now we have a reduction in the frequency band over here and you can place the eq at exactly the right frequency So this way you don't actually duck the whole channel or the whole frequency spectrum. You just uh, reduce the volume of a certain frequency band, which is in some cases preferable. Okay, so this is the fourth way of doing it. And um, there's also another way of doing it. And uh, we are using a transient control for this. Transient control is basically to amplify or to reduce the uh, attack phase or to amplify or reduce the sustain phase of a signal. And you usually get here um, a signal in and it recognizes or shows you where the attacks are of the sound, where are the sustain phases are, and you can just step in here and uh, amplify each of these parts, right? Uh, but we can also use a sidechain signal, as you can see here at the top. It's the same sidechain symbol here again. And we can use the kick drum here as an input. So every time, or this, this way, basically, we analyze the kick drum signal. And every time we have an attack phase in the kick drum signal, we can amplify something in our bass signal. see here at the bottom um, every time we have a kick drum we amplify the signal over here so we can apply volume shaping to our bass track with the transient control but we want to actually duck down the volume so we have to reduce this here or go to the negative range As you can see, we have here a nice volume reduction. So you can use this to basically sidechain a bass signal um, too. So transient control is also nice to use. And um, yeah, it's just a different way of doing it. Um, then we can use the audio sidechain for something else. For instance, um, as I explained in the, in the beginning, uh, we don't need to use the sidechain for lowering the volume of something. We can also increase 
uh, the volume or we can change something else. So for instance, we are on the, on the chord sound here um, and we apply here an audio, audio sidechain modulator. We get here the kick drum in post. And this time we modulate here the cutoff. So every time the kick drum hits, we open up this filter. Which can lead to interesting effects. And um, yeah. Maybe we use a delay yeah, at the end, delay one. And when you use the delay in full frequency mode here, so we don't filter out any frequencies and we use zero feedback and the mix at 100%, it's basically just an offset. So we can offset the sound by a certain amount on the beat grid, for instance, here, um, just um, two 16 notes. Um, yeah, delay. So, so this is the or original track. So every time the kick drum hits, basically we open the filter. And now we offset it by two uh, beats here. We get some kind of offbeat feeling because every time in between the kicks here we actually open the filter because we delayed the signal by two uh, uh, beats okay so this is also a way of using the sidechain for something creative you don't need to actually reduce just only the volume so maybe use another one here and we can maybe use the clap sound here and uh, open this one. Maybe we change the sync here. And let's see how this sounds. So now basically the clap sound also shapes the um, chord sound and the kick drum also. Uh, and the nice effect of this is that you basically glue all your tracks a bit better together. Instead of just routing everything into one bus, uh, throw a compressor on it and try to, you know, glue everything together this way. Uh, with this, you kind of um, create some connections between tracks between sounds and they kind of seem to work together this way so the audio sidechain modulator is actually pretty powerful in a lot of ways not only to just uh, remove certain sounds because you need uh, space for the kick drum um, so yeah Keep this, in, keep this in mind, sidechaining is not only for um, reducing the volume of the bass sound, it's made for all kinds of creative effects. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have some questions, then again, leave uh, your questions in the comments below. I try to answer them or join my Discord. Leave a like if you like the video or learn something new or maybe subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.